Hello there Libras, welcome to your November and um, I feel like the theme for this month is about, you know, things have a way of sorting themselves out, of working themselves out, all the knots will be untangled and uh, all the things will be rightfully put in their place. People will be will, will learn not to overstep their boundaries, and when things are just you know left to their own devices, I feel like you know they have a, a way of naturally working themselves out. Okay, and so when I was shuffling out this spread for you, I saw two images that sort of uh, reaffirm this this same theme. Okay, that the universe has a way of recalibrating, and so. We can try to fix situations, we can try to, you know, push against the tides and, and to make something better, to change a situation or to, um, I want to say, like, even trying to assert our influence in a, an environment. But I feel like, you know, in, in the greater scheme of things, there is divine intervention that is going to right a situation. So, I saw two images. Um... And they're really good images. I, I really like this because I, I definitely feel like there's a balance in the universe that, that can be restored if things are actually left alone, okay? So I feel like the theme for this month is um, I want to say not to do anything and just let things sort themselves out. That's what it feels like to me. And the two images reaffirm this. So first of all, um, I see this scene, it's a very, um, it's, it's almost like uh, the slums, okay, and it, it seems like Thailand, it, it looks like a scene from, from like a Southeast Asian economy, so um, I see this little boy, he's sitting on a stool, and he's under a street light, so it's like, you know, the break of dawn, the sun just came out, out and he's hungry okay it's early in the morning he's he looks very ragged like his clothes have holes in it he looks like he's about he's probably like seven or eight but he looks kind of malnourished and very stunted like short and and just you know he's hungry and he's looking at this street vendor she has like a huge frying pan and she's frying up things so that she can sell it uh, for 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 people to eat during breakfast okay so it's like the breakfast rush hour everyone's trying to get to work and this kid he's he's hungry he's poor he doesn't have the money so he's looking longingly at uh, this lady she's like a perfect stranger on the street she's cooking something he's smelling it and he's just like you know, I don't, I don't see him like begging or, or or making it known that he's hungry. But like, she serves some of her customers, and then she looks at him, and she's just like, she puts some of whatever she's cooking. I, I feel like she's frying beignets or something, some some type of a dough, some type of a snack, and she puts it in a, a little paper pouch that she makes from just regular, you know, um, paper, and she gives it to him. Okay, and so what's really interesting is I don't hear anything in this scene, and I, I don't hear any thoughts, I don't see any feelings, I just saw whatever the, the image depicts, which is really rare. Usually there are like, uh, you know, words associated with it, but I, I feel like the, the scene is very clear. Um, and from the vendor's perspective, I don't even, you know, hear like, Oh, that boy, I feel so bad for him. Let me give him, you know, these um, beignets. I, I don't even hear that. She just does it almost as if she was divinely guided to do it. She just does it because it's in her nature or it's in her instinct. Uh, or it's just, you know, her maternal instinct kicking in where she wants to, you know, where she feels bad. But I don't even get that. I just feel like... I have this, these are, you know, what I have, this boy doesn't have it, so I'm going to give it to him. It's like a balancing act that happens in a very natural, unimposing way, okay? Nobody told her to do it, she just happens to do it. The boy never expressed that he was hungry, but he's looking at it, and he could benefit from it, so it's going to go to the person that... that needs it. So I definitely feel like that, that context. I don't even want to say the word charity because I feel like it can sound so condescending in, in certain situations. I feel like it's not an act of charity. It's just an act of giving and receiving reciprocity. Okay. So that's the first scene. 
the second scene, so once she gives him these um, this package of beignets, it zooms out to the scene in the background. And I just see like a lot of motorcycles, a lot of cars. So it feels to me like um, a developing country. There aren't a lot of like, um, you know, nice cars on the road, like luxury cars, but there are a lot of motorcycles, a lot of like just big trucks, okay? Um, they look a little bit rickety. And so there's a lot of pollution, just smoke emitting from these motorcycles, from these um, um, commuters, and it, all this smoke and all this, everything is just like emitted into the atmosphere. So there's so much like uh, pollution, there's just so much dense fog, and it, it's really uncomfortable. It, it feels very, very stifling. So just Im imagine, like, you know, this is uh, the morning commute, the morning rush hour, and it's already the morning time, and it just feels really hot and, and, and very stuffy and just um, congested, okay? Congested, like, physically in terms of traffic, and then congested because you can't breathe. And... So what happens is um, all of that builds up and then it, it builds up into the atmosphere and then the rain comes, okay? This, this massive pouring of rain from the sky and uh, as most of you, I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I see this a lot in my travels. In a lot of countries that I've traveled to, um, whenever the rains come, um, people just, you know, stay indoors, okay? And so the commute, commuters, they, they find a place to hide out, okay? They can't really get anywhere far without getting drenched in this torrential rain if they're riding a motorcycle, for example. So they find a place to find uh, refuge. And then the traffic stops. This boy, he goes back into wherever he came from. And the vendors, you know, they, they stop conducting business and everything is just uh, calm and, and the, the congestion and, and the pollution just stops just seizes, activity just sees because this downpouring of rain just comes in and, you know, wipes everything clean, okay? So that's what I'm sensing. It, it's almost like the, the flood that basically wipes off everything that is unclean, unsavory, um, unappealing from the earth. And then the world begins again. That's what it feels like to me. It's very biblical. But it's kind of weird because it's um, the context is, you know, we're looking at a different location. We're looking at like a developing economy and we're looking at an area that is uh, ridden by pollution and just the throngs of humanity and just, you know, the, the impact that they're having on the environment, but also um, the impact that they're having in general, like the noise pollution, the, the physical pollution, the traffic, the congestion, all of that is wiped clean, okay? And so, let me talk to you first about um, the first image and then I'll go into the second image, okay? Um, I feel like there's definitely, um, there, there's definitely some divine intervention, um, divine, like, actions or some spiritual energy that's guiding things from behind the scenes, okay? And um, first of all, this card, I have here the Six of Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles is usually like um, good karma coming back around, okay? What goes around comes around. The boomerang effect, okay? Things being calibrated, things being evened out. Whoever has been working, you know, really diligently, really hard, um, it's going to be compensated. Whoever has been uh, slipping up, um, manipulating things, manipulating situations, uh, doing very little, trying to get by, you know, like, um, so I, I feel like whoever deserves something will get their due justice, okay? And this can be good or this can be bad. Usually this is in a very good context, but I also feel like what goes around comes around, okay? So it, it's a, a very immense karmic effect that is kind of like permeating this entire reading. So I feel like you're, you're going to be seeing these things uh, rectified. You're going to be seeing things kind of like put in their place, people put in their place for the month of November because there's some divine karmic justice happening behind the scenes, right? And um, it's linked up here with the emperor. And the emperor in this situation, in this context, it is somebody that is working behind the scenes, like possibly 
a um, a person that has passed away, like a beloved, you know, paternal, very strong paternal figure that is working behind the scenes in your favor, okay? But then again, uh, the emperor is very fair and is very just. So this is an emperor that is not, um, that doesn't discriminate, okay? He sees the action and he uh, dishes out the rewards according to the actions that he sees. So if you've been doing your due diligence and working hard, you're going to be handsomely rewarded for your hard work and your effort. If you've been shying away from responsibilities, clocking in, um, you know, um, late, like coming to work late and then leaving early, I feel like this is all recorded. This is all, you know, written down. This is all documented and you will be getting your just reward. So the month of November then, you know, with this as a foreshadowing, I feel like it is a month. Well, first of all, I just want to say it is a Mercury retrograde period. Okay, and um, Mercury retrograde is going to start tomorrow. Tomorrow is October 31st, and it's going to run through the entire month of November. So the, for the first three months, we're in the midst of the Mercury retrograde period. And the, the last week then is like a, um, a shadow phase, a shadow period as we transition away from or out of that Mercury retrograde period. And what I have noticed with Mercury retrograde, and I feel like this might be even more so for your sign because it comes up in different ways for all the other signs is what I've noticed. And I feel like for you, there's a recalibrating, there's a balancing out of karmic energy. Okay, and so that basically means um, cover yourself, cover your, cover yourself, um, whatever you've been doing, if you've been on the up and up, if you've been doing things, you know, ethically and morally, I feel like, you know, you're going to be uh, divinely compensated and divinely, I want to say, uh, recognized for, for all your achievements. If on the other hand, you've been sneaking around, you've been manipulating, you've been lying, cheating, stealing, um, or whatever it is that humans do, um, you're going to get your, your, your justice, okay? So I, I definitely feel here, this is a month where I think like um, things come to light, where whatever was hidden will be found out, whatever actions that have been, you know, like underhanded dealings. Um, uh, I, I'm seeing like, um, I'm seeing a table and I'm seeing hands and like exchanging money, like underhanded dealings or, you know, under the table dealings, things that have not been very ethical or moral. All of these things will be kind of like brought to light. And so choose what side you're on and adjust your actions accordingly okay so that's what i'm sensing here and um so the, the the first image like i said you know it is not so much about charity okay it's about giving back it's about giving and receiving it's about a, a seamless process where you know, on some days, so the, the first scene is with the little boy. He, he's getting like some food from the vendor because, um, you know, he seems hungry and she has extra or she has. So wh whatever that, that situation is, there's a trans transaction. Somebody who has a lot is giving to somebody who doesn't have anything. So it's not an act of charity. I, I don't want to use the word charity. But I feel like it's a flow in energy. It's, it's an exchange from somebody who has a lot to somebody who doesn't. Okay. And so this exchange with the Six of Pentacles, this is sort of like an exchange in order to help a person because we understand innately, we've all been there. We've all been through rough times. We've all been through, you know, peaks and valleys. And we understand what it means to fall on hard times. And we can sympathize and empathize with those who have fallen on hard times. And so we do whatever we can to get them back on their feet. OK, even if we're not able to like provide them, you know, like a month of salary, even if we're not able to uh, contribute a, a significant amount of money or resources or food or whatever it is to sustain them uh, for a long period of time, we do whatever we can in our own capacity to make a situation better for another person. So I feel like 
what it's what it's uh, showing me here is a situation where you know being able to slip yourself into somebody else's shoes and to understand what it is that they're dealing with the the, the struggles that it it, uh, it entails being in their shoes understanding you know um, I, I keep hearing like you know where people are right now is not indicative of the bad choices or the good decisions that they have made where they are right now is a very temporary state of being and so we need to look at the person as to the person that they are right now what do they need what can I do to help the situation and make it better for the other person so it's not about you know casting judgment because I, I do feel like in uh, in some aspect Libras you guys can be very judgmental and I feel like you know you're you're very keen on making very balanced very smart decisions and so if you're dealing with somebody who hasn't had a track record of making solid grounded practical you know good decisions you might not want to associate yourself with them but what I'm feeling with this reading is it's about understanding things a little bit more understanding that you know whoever you're dealing with whatever situation they're in this is very temporary it's not indicative of you know all the past decisions coming back to haunt them it's just looking at this person the way they are right now what do they need what do I have that I can part with to make the situation better for them um, and I just want to say like once again you know it's not about charity it's not about giving to the uh, underprivileged or you know um, the, the less fortunate okay because that is that shows like power differentials and that shows like um, power dynamics in a way where it's very it can be very condescending this is just like understanding the human condition and as a one human being to another you know what can we do to make the situation right what can we do to make things better okay and so what I I do see is your I, I do feel like you're you're shifting your framework just a little bit so that you can have this understanding or that you can see it and once you see it, you're going to want to do something about it. You're going to want to help. And so the, the trick is, you know, it, it's not about enabling or, you know, providing a lump sum of resources in order to help this person, like pave the way for this person. It's about what we can do in this moment in time. It doesn't have to be a huge, huge contribution. It just has to be something that is realistic and practical that we can do in this present second this moment in time I hope that makes sense I feel like you know I'm spending what 18 minutes just explaining this and I feel like I don't know why I'm dwelling so much on it but I feel that's that's the, that's the change in 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 the paradigm shift okay and um, I do sense as well you know there's definitely a divine figure working behind the scenes in order to facilitate this change for you and in order to write all the things in order to um, um, recalibrate whatever situation that has been very very unbalanced I feel like things will be you know balanced out if you are the one if you are the little boy that has fallen on hard times I do feel there's some something behind the scenes that's really going to help you that's really going to push help push you along and you know it's like all those peaks and valleys right you're going to be operating at your peak and I do feel like you're being divinely guided along to, something is facilitating the journey the the situation for you and is alleviating stress is alleviating anxiety is alleviating um, a lot of your worries okay so I feel like you know no, wherever you fall on the spectrum you could be the one physically helping the other person you're divinely guided to help and the universe is speaking to through you to help the other person or you could be the one who is in need of help and there's a stranger coming into the picture to, to provide you help that you did not anticipate okay so whatever the situation is 
it's divinely guided it's um, whoever is doing the helping they are getting a divine nudge in order to help the other person and I feel like that's really beautiful because it, it basically means it basically reaffirms that there is a grand design that there is you know uh, there's more to this life that there's more to what we're doing that in in some way we are all interconnected okay so I don't want to sound too preachy but I do feel like this is a very spiritual reading for many of you and maybe you need this information or this message I hope it, it resonates with you so moving on um, okay so the second image what I'm really drawn to is that that cloud of pollution okay it's like building 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 and it's stuffy it's congested it's uncomfortable it's hard to breathe in there might have been an environment that can be very difficult to be in. So I have here the Ten of Swords. Um, I feel for many of you, this might be like a financial situation where everyone is like looking out for themselves, okay? Um, I, I feel like opportunists. I feel people who are like... Um, it's like dipping their hands in a pie so it's like everyone is all out for themselves everyone is looking out for number one everyone is scrambling everyone is trying to see how fast and how much they can get out of a situation and no one's really you know uh, thinking about like well what happens to the person that is uh, that we're taking all of this from so I feel like there might have been a lot of takers there might have been a lot of opportunist people opportunistic people excuse me there might have been a situation where you know it, it's very snippy it's very um, calculating it's um, it's very low energy it can feel very very stifling um, I do sense I'm hearing this now you're dealing with very selfish people you're dealing with very selfish people and I feel like you know the the Libran person is all about the balancing act okay it's all about fairness it's all about recalibrating you feel very off kilter and, and unbalanced and wobbly in this environment because you're dealing with people who have very low vibrations who are scrambling who are in the midst of you know um, who complain that they don't have enough when they have a lot of resources at their disposal um, I'm hearing, you know, like selfish. I'm hearing lazy. Okay, so excuse me. Um, I feel like you're dealing with people like this, and uh, they make excuses. Oh, I don't want to do that. Uh, I, I'm going to call in sick. I don't want to be at work and have to handle that difficult case. So I'm going to call in sick. And little did they know that, you know, if they call in sick, that case has to be resolved, and you're going to have to send it off to somebody else. Right? That's not fair. And so fairness and balance and justice is, um, is, is kind of like your M.O. That's what you thrive on. And that brings you, you know, uh, comfort and stability. And that's how you feel everybody should behave. But you're dealing with low vibrational people who are all about themselves. What they can get out of a situation. How they can evade responsibility. How they can, you know, um, one up on another person. And so it's an environment where, you know, like I said, that, that dust cloud, that the pollution, the smog, the, the congestion, all of it builds up and builds up and builds up. And then it creates like a major rainstorm, you know, really heavy torrential, um, like a monsoon coming through to kind of like stamp everything back down to the ground. Okay, put things in their place, put people in their place. I do feel as if... Um, for, for some of you Libras, your temper might come into the picture, okay? You're like splicing through all this, okay? This is a sword energy, very well could be your energy. It's sort of like, you know, all this bickering, this back and forth, this um, nonsense communication, this selfishness, this, um, you know, opportunistic, um, all of these opportunistic, like, people and, and situations. I feel like you're coming in here with one giant sword and putting people in their place. Okay? 
So I feel like, you know, that rainstorm stamping down the, the pollution, all the dust, all the debris in the air and just bringing it back down to earth. It's a very sobering moment for, for the people, especially if they have not seen your wrath. If they have never seen you off kilter and angry and upset, they're going to get the surprise of their life. Because I feel like you're coming in very powerful, splicing through all these excuses. And uh, the way that you do it is delicate, but also very forceful. Okay? And um, I guess that's like a... a uh, an oxymoron like how could something be so delicate but also so so forceful so what I feel is you're relying heavily on your wit in order to you know strike a, a chord with a group of people and I do feel like it is a group of people that you're dealing with who have been behaving this way you're setting people in their place you're not tolerating excuses and I feel like in the greater scheme of things, you're just like, you guys are very, very, very balanced. You guys are are, are like uh, very non-confrontational, okay? Um, conflict avoidant, I, I would say, in, in a lot of situations. Um, it's only when you get in like interpersonal relationships that you really are very vocal about what you want and you're not conflict avoidant. But I feel like, you know, in, in a work environment, in a social setting, in a public um in, in a public environment too you're very peaceful and you're kind of like the 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 um the voice of reason but i feel that the voice of reason is falling on deaf ears because you're dealing with people who purposely evade responsibility who are not operating at their best and um they don't listen to reason. They don't respond to logic. They're all about themselves. And so this splicing through all that BS needs to happen because I feel like enough's enough. Okay, so there's like something imploding, something coming down, uh, like the, the wrath of the Libra person is coming down and stomping the situation to the ground. Stomping and then, you know, um, stomping your heels and then really putting out a fire really putting people in their place, really showing them that you're not playing around, okay? Um, if you are dealing with a Sagittarius, um, definitely look at that video because um, I'm getting a similar energy where it's like um, somebody is like um, getting a taste of the true Sagittarius fury, okay? Sagittarius is fire. It's, it's all about, like, ethics and morality. And um, it's it's like a, a hot iron, okay? It, it strikes and it burns and it, it, it like, will uh, kind of, like, cut through anything standing in its way. And I feel like with your energy, it's very similar. Somebody, I mean, a group of people, will be seeing your wrath for the very first time. And I feel like it's going to set them in their place. And they're going to remember this moment, okay? So this is one way in which the energy from Mercury retrograde can be very productive. Because I feel like things come to light. And I do sense that like people will be called out for, for, for what they are, pretty much, okay? So I feel like you're setting things right, okay? And you're doing this in the spirit of kindness, or I'm sorry, in, in the spirit of fairness. Not kindness, fairness. It could also be kindness because you're just like, that, that's not fair for this other group of people who have been really diligently working, doing their work, minding their own business, not causing pro problems, helping one another. And then this group of people who are just like jerks. So you might be thinking, you know, I'm doing this out of kindness so that it doesn't happen again. Or you can be doing this, you know, just in the spirit of um, balance, fairness, justice. So you're dishing out karmic justice too, I feel, with a group of people, okay? Um, and I do feel like it's a group. I don't feel like this is a one-on-one, -on -one, interpersonal, you know, relationship type of an environment. I feel like this is a group of people that are childish and they need to be set in their place. You could also be dealing with children. You could also be dealing with, you know, a group of people that you're mentoring, coaching, teaching, whatever the, um, the environment is. It's sort of like putting people in their place and they will see and feel your raw power, okay? So 
I have here the Knight of Pentacles, and um, the 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 words that I got is like stopping all that de pollution and all the, those debris back to the ground. Okay, and you know the elephant, um, they they have really really strong legs, right? Like they stomp on the ground when they walk through. So I feel like there is a situation here where you're literally stomping on the ground, packing things down, okay, putting things down, doing so in a very purposeful, noisy, and just like no nonsense type of a manner, okay, and this is great. And then with this card, I'm also hearing that sound, you know, that, that trumpeting sounds that the elephant makes, and it's, it can be very loud, but it's not a high shriek, okay? It it's a, a lower octave, but it gets its point across, right? Like it's very undeniable. Like once you hear it, you're like, oh, that's the trumpeting of the elephant. And so I feel like you're making your power known, okay? And so I feel like there's a lot of imagery here about you know noise and calamity and and just you know being very firm and and very strong, very um. um commanding and just being very very sure as to what you're stomping where you're stomping and, and the noise that comes along with it so this is typically not a Libran you know um, quality you guys are very very um, I, I think of you guys sometimes as like the ballerina you glide across the stage okay very graceful effortless and just you know you you don't run into walls you guys are not technic like like usually not very clumsy you don't you know stub your toe and 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 hit the table and and you know the cabinet and things like that but i feel like for this month it's like ev all the all of your actions are very directed towards a specific purpose okay so that's what i'm feeling here and what i have here is first of all there is a Eight of Pentacles, a big pot of money, okay? And I feel almost like it's being divided. Um, uh, it's, it's divided into smaller segments or smaller portions. It's supposed to go towards um, a specific thing, a specific person. And especially, it's supposed to go towards the people that deserve it. Six of Pentacles. But we have people here that are trying to get a piece of the pie. That are all fighting and clamoring for a piece of it. And you're kind of thinking, I don't know why you're fighting for it. You don't deserve it. You're probably thinking that. And so you're trying to distribute these resources. And you're trying to be fair. You're trying to be just. You're trying to balance it, things out. Okay, And so there's definitely uh, finance related things coming into the picture where you're trying to be fair. For some of you, this could be divvying up some type of an inheritance. You might be entrusted with that responsibility. And, you know, money changes people. And so I feel like you might be seeing somebody behaving in a very surprising manner that is um, unanticipated or you feel like it's out of character. But honestly, it's their true colors coming out because, you know, money changes things. Money changes people. Money changes situations, okay? And you're going to start to see that sense of like uh, bickering, greed, um, uh, selfishness coming out from people, um, especially in very unexpected ways, mainly because there's a lot to lose here. So I feel like some of you might be entrusted with the responsibility of distributing funds, distributing bonuses, distributing uh, resources, uh, dishing out. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people... Uh, Libras who might be in a um, in in an, uh, uh, in a position of authority. So like you may, might be managing people. You're dishing out like um, you're dishing out like um, what is that word? It's like evaluation for your employees. You're like here's where you did really well. Here's where you didn't. And then you know the the employee is like scowling because they didn't get a, a good evaluation. Okay, but they deserved it, right? Because you, you see what they've done over the years, or you, you've seen their performance, and you see them, you know, constantly clocking in, you know, late, leaving early every day. And so you're going to be very fair and very just. 
And then you're going to reward the people that are, you know, really great team players that uh, work diligently, that are hardworking, that don't whine and complain whenever they're and don't, you know, renege on their responsibilities. So I, I, I feel like there's a situation here where you're in charge of this pot, distributing the good and the bad. And I feel like you're you're doing it in a manner where it's like it's bringing you a lot of satisfaction to be in a position of power, mainly because you feel like you're finally able to exact change in a work environment or in a, an environment overall where you're giving to people that deserve it. OK, so that's great. Good or bad. You're giving to people whatever they deserve. Um but I also feel like, you know, behind the scenes, you're definitely uh, divinely guided to kind of like, uh, it's like spiritual energy working through you to right a situation, to balance things out. And so, like, um, you know, fighting alongside them, okay? So I, I, I feel like there is somebody who's coming back around and they're willing to put in the work and they're willing to make amends and they're willing to do what's right by you. And so take, take that how you may. If this is a recurring cycle, however, I feel like, you know, um, the universe has a way to recalibrate, okay? Whatever is meant for you will come back for you. Whatever is not coming back for you, maybe it's just not meant for you. But I do feel there's immense um, reawakening here, revisiting, reviving a situation. And I feel like it has the potential to change, uh, to turn back around and to change around mainly because of this um, you're starting off with really strong cards. This is like good karma coming back home to roost, as well as, um, you know, divine energies working behind the scenes in order to protect you and keep you protected and, and not have anybody, anything in your environment mess with your vibe, okay? So I'm going to leave it at that. I hope the reading finds you well, Libra, and I hope that it is helpful. I hope the messages uh, will be, you know, somewhat helpful as you navigate through the month of November okay so I will leave it at that and if you're looking for a reader as well I do have a link in the description box below for a uh, psychic her name is Bridget she's based out of California if you are looking for spiritual guidance I highly recommend that you get a reading with her she's great um, and if you're interested in purchasing this okay i will leave it at that um i will talk to you later and take care of yourself have a wonderful thanksgiving for those who, who are celebrating and um i'll talk to you soon take care